Run Win. Hello guys, I'm James and on January 10th, 1963, Congressman Albert S. Herlong Jr. of Florida read a list of 45 communist goals into the congressional record. This list, of course, was compiled by Dr. Cohen Skousen in his book, The Naked Communist, which was written in 1958. We are going to go through just three of them that I really didn't find interesting. It's just that those about, I read, I skimmed through it and I ran across some, and no, of course, I do not appreciate them. But I suggest you can go ahead and read it. If you want to, it's from the book, The Naked Communist. You can actually search on the internet, 45 Communist Goals. So let's, I guess I'll put this sideways. Let's start with number 26. Prescribe like homosexuality, degeneracy, and promiscuity as normal, natural, and healthy. Now, I'm not going to comment on the very first one because a lot of people, you know, haters of God, you know, they think Jesus is a liar anyway and God's, you know, whatever. So I'm not going to comment on the first one. But have you ever noticed? It seems as though sexual promiscuity has popped up. I mean, it popped up years ago. Actually, I do specifically remember the year. I'm not going to tell you when. And I do, you know, I do remember, you know, there are certain motion pictures that a lot of people see. And, you know, people drop the, um, what's it called? The, the, the rating so little kids can watch it. And I do remember the first time I ran across a movie that was PG-13. should have been rated R because... <laughs> The girl had her top exposed. I mean, she, her bosom, she, it was inappropriate, and there was no excuse for it. You know, even though they wanted to pretend it was something else, that's what it was. But that was the first time I saw it. But it seems though, even in children's movies, that there's actually a, you know, I saw one movie some years ago where you know it was like, it must have been 12, 8 to 12, 10, 5, maybe even five seconds of film on this thing. You know, they you just saw roll around in bed, whatever, and then that was it in a child's movie, you know, sexual promiscuity, oh, it's okay, it's not okay, never has been okay, because it incurs a loss in other people's lives, but you know, just even, you know, <laughs> that's from the biblical perspective, but I mean, come on, do you want to, I mean, promote, that's, but that was a con one of the communist agendas, promote sexual promiscuity, that people can have sex and do whatever they want to, and they'll be fine, you know, but we already know that's not fine, you know, children born out of wedlock, parents divorcing, you know, they get together, they divorce, and the children are thrown around from all over the place, you know, because, you know, they're taught that you can have sex with anybody you want to. Then you got teenage pregnancies, little boys who are now fathers of, you can technically say fatherless children because they're not in wedlock. And it's called sexual promiscuity, you know, anything goes, you know, and it, but it causes problems because it, it deteriorates, you know, it just causes problems. <laughs> you know, it, it doesn't deteriorate the family unit. God's established family unit. But it, do, it causes problems because now you, then, you, then you've got abortion has to come up now because you have sexual promiscuity, people fornicating, committing adultery, whatever. And now you got abortion has to come up now because now you got, you told a little girl she can do whatever she wants to. Now she's pregnant. Hello? It doesn't work. And now you got to deal with the abortion issue off when the real issue was sexual promiscuity. So it's interesting. So you need to ask the Lord what to watch for your kids. Okay. Next thing, what to watch for your kids. You know, do it for yourself. Ha! <laughs> Here's another one. Number 28. Eliminate prayer or any phase of religious expression in the schools on the grounds that it violates the principle of separation of church and state. If I remember correctly from listening to certain persons and, you know, reading, you know, the concept of separation of church and state is not inside the Constitution of the United States of America. In fact, it's it's in the communist thing, the communist constitution, you know, social, the social union, union, union of social, yeah, social, social, socialist republic, you know, is in their constitution because that was atheistic nation that hated God and they wanted, you know, he went out, went to town and, you know, stop, well, Stalin and other people, they shut down churches and things like that. But that's not in our constitution. We came here for religious freedom. I mean, we left because we need, they needed religious freedom. Hello, that is the point of why the pilgrims came over here, regardless of what anybody else says. They came over here for religious freedom because, you know, you know, if you had a king who was one religion, everyone had to be that. It was a state religion. The king was the head of the, the 
the church. And then the next, you know, then, but if someone else showed up, he had his son decide he wanted to be another religion, you know, he or she, then the whole state had to move to that religion. He started having religious persecution because it was a state religion. So we came here so there would be no established state religion. We would not say this religion of the United States is officially this, and if you are not this, you will get thrown in jail. They wanted that particular freedom so that they can, anybody, government officials, anybody can get up and say anything they want to about their God. Now what they came up with, the people who hated God pretending that that was supposed to be no government endorsed. Now that was of course the god, a godless uh, group of people on, you know, the majority on the Supreme Court. Because I'm sure some other people probably voted against it. Ha! I'm not going to get into it. I mean, you can't say the Supreme Court did, you know. There are people who got some sense on the Supreme Court. But, they, you know, they're like, hey, no prayer in school. They, they uh, you know, no they say no prayer in school. When actually all they mean is no uh, government's you know, endorsed or sponsored, so the whole school doesn't say everybody has to be a Christian, otherwise whatnot, you know. They say a prayer in school, you don't have to say it. If it wasn't designed so that there would be no religion in school, kill children, you can pray in school, you always could. It's just that they, the Supreme Court decided that teachers couldn't lead children into prayer. But a child can come in his classroom, they can pray before class starts. Do the research, it's on edu.gov. Okay guys, type that out, school prayer, edu.gov. I mean, it's there, but the thing is that they just, there's no school endorsed where the principal doesn't get up and lead them in prayer. You know, haters of God don't want to hear anything about God. But you know, you know, the principal can't lead him in prayer, but a student can. You can pray before practice, you can pray after practice, you can pray during classes. Not during classes, you can pray outside of class. During the break between classes, you can pray, you know, you can pray. Now you don't have any business praying so people can see you, that's against the Christian religion. Now some religions, they do it so people can see you, you know, but they have the reward. They want to be seen, so, you know, that's just it, that's their religion. But the king of heaven and said, you're not supposed to be doing that anyway, just be seen, so I'm going to keep moving on forward, I don't even get into that, but you know, you're not supposed to, Matthew chapter 6, you know, you're not supposed to be praying to be seen, so you don't pray to be seen, you pray to get results, you pray for your food to be blessed, the food is sanctified by the word of God in prayer, you pray, you know, before a game, you can come together and pray, the teacher doesn't have to do it, it's perfectly okay, but a child do it, which includes, um, you don't have any business, officials passing things that said children can't do religion, now, now the problem that people say is, well, what about all religions? You know, if you allow a Christian to do it, that means we can allow, you know, uh, shirts and stuff with witchcraft on them too, whatnot. Well, that ain't a problem. The reason why it isn't a problem because you give the children a real, a real realistic approach to what's really going on in life. Halloween is a satanic holiday. So technically you should be celebrating Halloween anyway in school. So don't play around that. So the people who hated God, they don't want Jesus in it, but they don't mind the, you know, whatnot. They don't care about the Halloween concept. They'll, oh, they'll do a, a party, a Halloween party, but that's a satanic holiday. I mean, come on, do the research. It's, you know, pagan, satanic, don't, but anyways, so we need to move on past that to the next thing. But so that, that's what it was. It's so the children, so the children can, but you know, the devil, I see the devil was trying to get, you know, we'll say the communists, this we say, I say the communists because it was a, I got to go back. The USSR was an atheistic nation. They actually said they were, you know, do the research, find people who live there. I know someone who lived there. They grew up underneath it. It's not funny. It's not a joke. It really is atheism and it's destroyed the country anyway. It doesn't exist anymore. And most of the people who, most of the younger people who are purporting it, you know, you know, pushing for it, you know, socialism, that junk like that, they had no idea. They were probably babies or wasn't even born. I believe it, it fell, it wasn't around what, 1990, the USSR fell. So the majority of people I've heard weren't even born until, you know, maybe 1998 to afterwards. So they were like not even born, you know, when that happened. So, and you know, so, I mean, come on. So they're completely, they don't, they didn't grow up in a world with the USSR. But anyways, let's continue. I need to continue with that. But, you know, the church, separation of church and state, so that doesn't exist in our constitution. Anybody should be able to get up and say anything. I mean, come on. 
I mean, hello. Because it says the government does not establish a church. That's all it means. It doesn't mean anything else. Now, back on the school stuff, people who hate God don't want conviction. They don't want anyone to say anything they do is wrong. So they are pretend separated church and state, no, no, nothing in schools. No, no, no. The schools should be able to do whatever they want to. Because listen, if you think God doesn't exist, what they don't want is their child to hear something else to tell you the truth. They don't want someone to tell them that they say, hey, they're promoting, promoting that. That there is no, you know, some people promoting that there is no God. So, hey, so they, I need to finish this. <laughs> you know, they're promoting there is no God. Not, um, so they just, but they don't want anyone to tell the child the difference. They want the child to go to school, learn all about this stuff that says there is no God. Evolution says there is no God because it leaves God out of the equation. And while I'm at it, I'll just tell you when I got to, when I took classes at a certain uh, higher education uh, institution, you don't know which one is, which one, because I went to <laughs> more than one. So, but they actually said Christianity was wrong. They didn't even play around with it anymore. So don't pretend the separation of church and state is thing, because if it's really the separation of church and state, then they shouldn't be mentioning Christianity. Oh, but they are. They're saying Christianity is wrong. They're coming after Christianity. They're not coming after the other religions because other religions are an issue to them other religions don't bring them conviction they don't care about the other religions it's christianity that's the issue almighty god they're not concerned they don't want jesus in there because they don't want really they don't want the little kid to come home and be saved don't pretend you're all hey we love everybody tolerance blah, 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 stuff like <laughs> I'm gonna do that for you well you know tolerance yay whatever you know yay everything's cool and then it's like they don't want Christianity because if that kid comes home and he's a Christian, he reads his Bible and says, Mommy, you shouldn't be lying. You shouldn't be cheating on your taxes because the Bible says, Thou shalt not steal and thou shalt not bear false witness. So you can't, you, well, that's just against your neighbor. But you're not supposed to be lying. Well, they're not going to want to hear that, even though they're pretending that they're all tolerant and they love everything. No, 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 they're not tolerant because when their kid shows up and their kid's saved, they're not going to have a problem with that because the kid's going to say, Mommy, you shouldn't do that. You shouldn't cheat on your taxes. You should pay your taxes. Then you'll find out how hypocritical it is. So the next thing, the last one, slide to unlock. The last one is number 29. Discredit the American Constitution by calling it inadequate, old-fashioned, out of step, and modern needs, a hindrance to cooperation between nations on a worldwide basis. I'm going to read this one more time. Discredit the American Constitution by calling it inadequate, old-fashioned, out of step with modern needs, a hindrance to cooperation between nations on a worldwide basis. What makes a nation great is what it's founded on. The United States is a very, very young country and it's achieved its success because of the King of Heaven and because of the, what the Founding Fathers put in. They originally, you know, Thomas Jefferson originally, the first, one of the first, his first draft of the Constitution, I believe it was his first draft, when it said no slavery. We ended up fighting a war over it because the Southern states opposed it. But then, you know, so they left it out the Declaration of Independence when we when it found it, but then it had to, it came up eventually because we still the country was founded on those particular things. So our constitution based off, you know, what I mean, you know, only by like two people who signed the Declaration of Independence were deists. So whatever teachers are out there lying to their students and saying the debt signers of the thing were deists, no. Go look and find the religious affiliations of the people who signed the Declaration of Independence and the people who signed the Constitution. You'll see who the Founding Fathers were and what their religious affiliations were. I know I know there were two deists, I believe there were two deists and one Unitarian who signed it. Two out of the three, that's three folks out of 58 other people who were in religion. So don't let someone lie and say the Founding Fathers were deists because they weren't. Go read the Mayflower Contract, Compact, the word Jesus is in there. Jesus Christ, the gospel, is in the Mayflower Compact. Don't, that's a Christian. That's not a deist, not a Unitarian, because a deist doesn't believe that Jesus Christ came to the world as the Son of God, and if you believe you receive Jesus into your heart, God will save you and you'll go to heaven. No, that's not what deists believe. They're not, they don't believe that Jesus came to the planet specifically at a time where everybody knows Jesus existed, but he came as the son of God. So don't let someone lie and pretend the founding fathers were deists. That's just an atheistic lie that somebody, they just want to pretend. But 
to say that the Constitution is outdated. That's what a lot of people who hate the Constitution do. Oh, the Constitution is outdated. You know, right to bear arms. Whoa, that's outdated. We need to get rid of that. No, we don't need to get rid of that because that was a founding thing. That was one of the serious things of free press. Look at what Russia did to its press. It controlled the press. They press. Cuba controls the press. People, you know, North Korea, countries that control, you know, I believe, I, I actually think you don't get YouTube or something in China. I mean, I don't think they actually have actually, you know, countries who suppress, don't pretend how wonderful they are. No, if they're suppressing and the people outside, the people out in their country can't see it's better out there, quit that foolishness. That's exactly, that's exactly what it's for. That's why we have free press. So the president doesn't get up and trash a news network. That's inappropriate. It's, you know, you don't get up and do that. You're out of your element. You have no right to trash a news network as a president of a country, you know, but that's what they do. They suppress the free thing and the, the free freedom of religion. You know, they shall not establish a state religion. I mean, come on. When you establish a state religion saying nobody can be anything but this. See, establishing a state religion is also the same as establishing a quote-unquote non-religion. You know, the Supreme Court did decide some years ago, you don't need a religion, you don't need a deity to have a religion. I mean, that's true. You don't. So don't don't pretend that, you know, oh, we just don't believe in deity. No, no, no. You worship, you, 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 you worship something. You're either worshiping yourself or science. You're lifting up something. Something is your moral center of the universe. That's the simple definition of religion. Man's what is the moral center? Where is all the life? Where is the major focus? Who's in charge of the universe? Is ba Your belief on who's in charge is basically your religion. So if you believe nobody's in charge, people can do whatever they want to, you know, then your idea is that uh, mankind or whatever, either none, but you know, ultimately mankind, because mankind, someone's gotta be in charge. Someone's gotta decide what's okay. I mean, you can't do that. You can't, you can't even run it. I'm, I'm going long. You can't even run a house like that. I mean, come on. Even in, even in atheistic USSR, they did not allow, they were, um, uh, Stalin, what they cut down like 50,000 churches down to what, what 50 or 30, 50, like thousand churches down to like 500 persecuting and killing officials because atheism cannot handle another religion. That's so, so, you know, it's a religious thing. So, it might as well quit saying, you know, you know, that's just it. Because, you know, people want to pretend, but they're going to go to... S I don't need to go into that. <laughs> that's, I mean, that's illogical. But anyways, the Supreme Court did rule that because somebody wanted to have a humanist Bible study some years ago. And so, the you know, and if you do the research, God is actually one of the official definitions of God is the ultimate reality. It doesn't say deity. So all that, all that junk, you know, don't let someone pretend, oh, I just, what if you just don't believe there's a God, then why don't you just leave everyone alone who does? But see, it's not because it's a religious issue. It is a religious issue. Atheism has decided to take on a religious stance against religion. So it's not, you know, you, you don't, don't parade around in the religious arena and then pretend you're not a religion. You're playing around with the religious arena. So... In fact, someone said that some of the things, if you actually do research, they said some of the stuff that was happening in Russia and those other places was almost like a cult thing. It was almost like a religion because it had all the stuff except for the power of God and everything that the religion, you know, didn't have. I'm not, it, it did not, didn't have. It had everything the religion had except for the power of God. You know, it had everyone was together. We're all one, like the Tower of Babel. If you go read in the Bible, you know, the Tower of Babel, you know, when they decided to build that thing, they were all one going against the God of heaven. And you hear certain people who actually talk about what was really going in, the, in there. So you can't play around. But that's what, you know, what was it? That, you know, outdated. Oh, we don't need God anymore. We've advanced. Well, you know, atheism is a really, really old thing. It's in Psalms, like twice, two or three times. Atheism is not some brand new enlightened concept. You know, but you know to say that oh, our founding fathers, you know, that was back then when they needed needed God. We progress. We don't need God. We don't need morality. We can do whatever we want to. The United States Constitution is is, is old. You know, you know everyone. 
some super patriotism where you know you're patriotic. If you're in another country, you should be praising God for your country, and you should be bringing your country's patriotism up because the love of the country is what how the Lord blesses people to bless their country. But if you don't care about your country, maybe you're underneath the communist thing, and that they fake that in the communism. We got freedom, and we can do whatever we want to do, and we got the the blessing of the Lord, and everyone. Everyone's patriotic. Yay for the Fourth of July Declaration of Independence. But in the communist country, oh, they make you do, they make you do it too. They, they those, you've seen those movies. Maybe you haven't. Where they had the day where they lifted up this one person. Oh, there's no God, but they lifted this. I need to stop. There's no God, but they lifted this one person on top of everybody else. They got his pictures real big. Go read and do the stuff. Come on, God. Got me, God. God. <laughs> Come on, guys. They're replacing religion. They're replacing all the stuff with. One person, one thing. No freedom of the press, no rights. I mean, imagine all the people who were incarcerated and killed. People left the USSR. Don't pretend communism is great. If communism was great, people wouldn't have left. If socialism was great, no one would have left Germany. So don't play that game. But anyways, those are... That's just three of them. I didn't, I had, I, I was skimming through and I stopped at that one. I believe it was number 29. I stopped at that one. Uh, no weapon for me gives us your prosper. But, you know, maybe you should, you, you should read it. You can see. Everything has a source. Everyone has a plan. Don't let someone trick you and make you think that you can do anything you want to. Everything's cool. Whatever. You know, everything has a source. Everything has a plan. And if you, who you're, if who you're following and who you like if they're getting their source from some communist person, because everyone's getting their ideas from somewhere, guys. Don't pretend that we just came up with a beautiful society where everyone gives. That's communism. We take from the rich. That's communism. We try to drop the... We try to bring everyone to the same level. That's communism. I mean, come on. We want to make it so there's no expression of religion. That's communism. And the problem is... It feeds on people's flesh and what they want, and it lies, pretending it's going to give them something. But in the end, every single communist country, they're first, well, I'll say it afterwards. Every single communist country ends in dictatorship. Everyone we have as a communist nation has a dictatorship. So don't pretend that it doesn't. See, that's how they pretended. They, you know, Hitler, whatever he said, they liked him. He ended up being the dictator. People lived and died at his whim. Lenin, Stalin, people died at their whim. North Korea, come on. China, people are there. It, ends up, it always ends up being a one party dictatorship. So, I mean, come on, don't pretend that it does any of that, but it plays around on people's, you know, the poor people. Oh, we want to have money. Well, but, you know, the government should provide our money for us and give us everything and, you know, give us all the money we want. So, no, the purpose is simple. They want to take control of the thing because they pretend that it's prosperity. They do the same thing that capitalism does, but capitalism does not put the pressure on other people to provide for you. So, that's it. Um, that's, I mean, that's why you don't need to do that. And by the way, the other thing is social communist countries, there were over 200. Go look. There were over 200 social communist countries. And there's only like five left today. Cuba, North Korea, China. Um, I know Cuba, North Korea, China. I believe Vietnam is still one. But, you know, you can go find out what, what is. And there are a lot of countries that... That was two, I think it was 200 that did it, but it's like there are other ones that they were so short-lived, it didn't even work. Communism does not work. But those are the goals that they have, and they're, they, you know, that's what's behind it, and that's what they're serious about. It's not a joke. Politics isn't a joke. Find out where it's coming from, and find out what happened to them. Communism, excuse me, does not work. Otherwise, the USSR would still be here. Atheist and communism doesn't work. It's still, that stuff would still be here. And the communist countries that we have would be running the world economy. They'd be the richest country in the world, and everybody would be wanting to go, go to them. Everyone would be trying to get to their country because communism's so awesome. But since no one's trying to get into their country, oh, I just got, you know, this country. 
because everything is just so much better. They're free to do anything they want to. Arts is free. No, arts is not free in a communist country. You can't make any movie you want to in a communist country. You can't make any music you want to. So quit. That's enough of that. I love you. Um, thanks for joining me. Be blessed, name, living, Lord. Jesus Christ, I need to quit that. <laughs> Jesus is Lord, and we do not need to get overly did that because remember, that was the 45 communist goals. But guess what? Those people are in no longer in existence. The USSR is not in existence anymore. So there goes their goals for the United States of America. And we're still here, and we'll still be here. Communism lasted, what, 70 years in Russia? It's not there anymore. It doesn't work. It won't last long anywhere else because it doesn't work. So that's it. And you can go do the research on your own. God bless you. And remember, live, move, be!